Cool. All right. Like I said, we're recording this presentation. We've got a lot of people signed up. I'm sure some people will be heading in, getting off work. We don't want to take anybody up too much this time. My name is TJ Kidder. I'm the director of marketing here at Learn Academy. We have the quite a bit of the learn team here and we're really excited to have you all here for our info session this is just an awesome event for us to one get to know you and first this is your kind of first peek into how learn works first time you get to see us maybe some of you have been in the enrollment process maybe you started the jump start maybe this is the first time you meet us so one we're really excited to meet you but we have a couple things we just needed to dive into before we can get started with all that information so first of all just a few things about Zoom. This Zoom room here, it's like our classroom. It's a brave space. We're all here at the end of the day to just learn, have a good time. And this Zoom room is just like that. So please just make sure to treat everyone with respect. We also hope that you uh, please turn your cameras on. The Zoom room looks a lot just like how our classroom works. So it's immersive, it's engaging. We all have our climbers on. We're gonna have some time to um, open up for questions everybody introduce themselves so please we're here to engage with you we're here to get to know you a little bit more so and having your cameras on and being part of the presentation that'll make it all just a little bit easier and if you have any questions we have like i said we have the whole team the learn team here we're manning the chat so as we go through the presentation if you like a big thing you see like hey that's a big question please just throw it into the chat we'll get it answered you can also save it for the end like i said we're gonna have some time for some open q a and we'll talk about the next steps and we'll talk about any of the questions that you have. But first of all, our team. We're a growing team here at Learn. And what's really great is that we're all here to support you in one way or another. We all interact and engage with you pretty much all along the process here while you're at Learn. From one, from when you first start meeting us here to your journey inside of the classroom, through your internship program and through your career services program. You get to meet and interact with us because at the end of the day, we're here to support you along this journey. This journey is a big deal. It's hard, it's tough, but we're here to support you and make it as easy and seamless as possible because we're here to really help you all transition to this new career path as um, successful as you can. But at the end of the, uh, first in our classrooms, we start off with something that's called check-in. Check-in is a really great way for all of us to get to know you um, to get to, uh, to start off the day, talk about what's what we're going on. But here, we're going to use it as a way to get to know each other and kind of break the ice a little bit. So one, we're going to introduce ourselves. We're going to say where we live, where we're at. One of the um, awesome things about our program here is, one, we're headquartered here in San Diego. But a lot of our staff and a lot of our students are all across the United States. So our program is available to everybody. And I'm sure right here, right now, we have people coming in from coast to coast. So we're really excited to hear where you all are coming from. And last but not least, question three, what's your favorite singer, Dead or Alive? What's your favorite song by them? Um, always a fun question here. So one, throw it in the chat. We really want to hear what you all think, what you're saying. We're going to go through and intru introduce ourselves on the Learn team, and then we're going to popcorn around. So we'd love to hear from you. So we'll uh, we'll give you the opportunity to speak, and then you can popcorn to somebody else if uh, um, once you're finished. If you're unfamiliar with popcorn, you have the power. You get to pick anybody in the audience to speak. So we're putting you on the spot. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll kick it off. My name is TJ again. I'm the director of marketing here. I've been at Learn for five years now, and it's just been a really awesome journey working with hundreds of students just like you. And I live in San Diego. We're headquartered here in San Diego, like I said, and I'm born and raised in San Diego. It's an awesome city, and it's just been a great place to live for <laughs> my entire life. And favorite singer? I kind of thought about this really hard. Growing up, I was really into punk music and uh, uh, pop punk growing up and a band called Emma Rosa, Johnny Craig, his voice is like insane. Uh, I couldn't think of a song off the top of my head, but super cool band, super cool singer. Uh, and I'll pass it off to Sarah. Hi everybody. Um, my name's Sarah, I'm the Director of Academic Experience here at Learn. Um, I also live in San Diego. Um, I'm not from here, but I've lived here for about 12 years, so I'm pretty settled in and I really enjoy the city. Um, favorite singer? Um, I was just on top of my head. I feel like the person who has just the most amazing voice is Aretha Franklin. Um, and I popcorn to Paul. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Hutchinson. I'm the creative, uh, career um, readiness facilitator. Um, I'm originally from Manchester uh, in the UK. I've been in San Diego though now for uh, almost 14 years. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm also pretty settled in. Uh, my favourite singer, see this is bad, you know, I could go through uh, for days, but, but uh, I'm going to settle on 
Chris Isaac. I absolutely love uh, Wicked Game. So that might come as a surprise to my, uh, my teammates there. But, uh, yeah. Um, let's go with uh, Cumber. Thank you, Paul. Um, hi, I'm Kumba. I'm the alumni success manager. I live here in San Diego. My favorite singer is the musical goat, Michael Jackson. Okay. My favorite song is, if I don't say Liberian Girl by him, since I'm Liberian, it would be like, what the heck? But I would go with Liberian Girl. It's my favorite song by Michael Jackson. And I'm going to pass it off to Chantel. Thank you, Kumba. Hi, everyone. My name is Chantel Isaacs. I'm our internship program manager here at LEARN. Um, I also live here in San Diego. You're going to hear that from a majority of our staff, but not everyone. Um, and uh, my favorite singer, I'm with you, Paul. This is a hard question. Um, I'm going to go with Madam Stephanie Germanotta, better known as Lady Gaga. Um, she's just her voice is incredible. Like you can feel however you want about her music, but it is undeniable that she has an incredible voice. Um, I am going to popcorn to Marquista. Thanks, Chantel. Hey everyone, Marquista here, the enrollment manager at Learn Academy. I'm from Miami, Florida, and I legit do not have a favorite singer. I have an obsessive relationship with music and love all different kinds of music, all different kinds of songs. So I will pass it over to my colleague, Vanessa. In. Hey everybody, I'm Vanessa. I'm the operations manager for LEARN. Um, I live in San Diego uh, and my favorite singer, um, I guess I'd have to say Vic Ruggiero. He's the lead singer for the Slackers, which is kind of an old ska band. Um, he has a really unique voice. He's from New York and you can really tell that when he's singing. Um, favorite song is, uh, check out Yes, It's True. It's really, really good, like, a uh, love song. Um, who else in the Learn team hasn't gone? Or my popcorning? I think I'm going to choose someone. Why don't yeah, we go with, it. yeah, let's go with, um, let's go with Justin. Hi, I'm Justin Pinkert um, from St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, I'm not that much into like music that people sing. Um, I listen to a lot of music that's just like music in general. I like to just listen to chill music that keeps me calm. Um, gonna go with Annabella. Hi, my name is Annabella. I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina. And I like a lot of different music too. Um, I like lo-fi music, it's just very calming. Sorry, I'm supposed to pick someone. Um, let's see, I'll do Jackson. Let's see, am I the only Jackson here? That's a lot of people, yes, okay. Uh, my name is Jackson. I live in Newton, North Carolina, about, what, three hours from Wilmington. And I was actually at Oak Island a couple weeks ago. But um, favorite singer? I don't I don't know. I don't think there's anyone particular. Maybe Miles Kennedy from Alter Bridge. Uh, no song in particular, I suppose. <laughs> Um, shoot. There was a, I saw, I thought I saw a dude in the hammock. Chris. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jackson. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris. Um, I'm living near Milwaukee right now. Uh, my favorite singer, I got to go with Tom DeLong. Uh, Blue 22. He's having a huge win right now. He's right about aliens and UFOs, so I'm sure he's just over the moon right now. Um, all right, let's see who we got. Ron, Ron M., have you gone yet, man? All right, you're up. Hey, everybody. I'm uh, Ron. I reside in Oceanside, California. Uh, favorite singer? I got many of them, but I'm going to go with one, which is the queen of R&B, 
Mary J. Blige, and she has one song that I think everybody should listen to. It's called Be Happy. If you're in that bad mood, that's the song for you. Uh, I'm going to go with Kevin Rojas. Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm originally from New York, uh, but I've been living in San Diego for the past seven years. Um, I don't have a favorite singer uh, or a favorite song, but I do like uh, Salsa and Bachata. But again, no particular like favorite band or anything. So, yeah. I'm going to pass it off to uh, Daniel De La Rosa. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Danny. Or else I live in San Diego, but I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. Uh, moved out here with the military, stayed out here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a favorite, favorite singer either. I, I jump around from genre to genre, but I'm on a metal kick right now, and I really like the band Sepultura um, and Bloody Roots. It's pretty good. Let me pass it on to... I'm actually going to hop in, Danny, if you don't mind. We're going to keep it moving. I really appreciate all of you uh introducing yourselves really excited to meet all of you I'm really loving your answers it's really cool to hear one some awesome bands and singers i've never heard of so definitely going to check out a bunch of those um but we're really excited to hear where where you're from where you're at and uh take this presentation to the next steps start giving you presenting out all the information but real quick just a little bit of our story a little bit about us a little bit about learn what do we, where do we come from where we're at so we've been around for eight years now we have almost 700 graduates but a little bit uh, information on the next slide here, but we started in San Diego. We were in-person program with COVID things changed, but we've always kept to our family roots, our CEO and our CAO co-founders, husband and wife, same last name. So th our, this family feel, the community aspect, it runs deep here at Learn. We're all part of a big community, a large family, all with the same mindset, the same mission that we're here to help all of you, all career changers. We're, you know, our, our program really is built and designed for career changers, just like you, to make this incredible leap from not knowing how to code to make, becoming a, a developer and a lifelong career path. So we're here to support you every step of the way. And we do that a lot of different ways. Like we said, we have almost 700 graduates and we're like, we're coast to coast. We're, we've been over, we're almost in 33 states. We're in almost all the states across the US. So it's really cool to see how our learn community has grown across the eight years from just San Diego to all across the US. And we're really big on making the, the not just getting a tech education, but the tech industry itself more accessible and more diverse, more representative of the way it should look because the tech industry at itself is just like you guys. It's people who are just like us. They look like us and be like us. So we really are on a mission to make the tech industry look and feel just like that. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Marquista. She's going to talk a little bit more about our process, the nuts and bolts, and how we're going to help you get there to this new career path. Thanks, TJ. We'll start off by talking a little bit about how the program is structured. So it's a four month live remote full stack web developer program, which means for three months you're in the classroom, um, collaborating with your classmates and instructors going over the curriculum. The schedule is full time, Monday through Friday, nine to five Pacific. So I've met with many of you um, already. So as you're traveling east across the US, that time slot will stake out to 10 to six, 11 to seven, 12 to eight, um, the further east you go. During the final month during the program, you'll complete a remote coding internship with a tech company. The goal there is to get you real world experience. You can put on your resume and mentorship as you're starting off in your developer career. For the duration of the program, we do give you a laptop that has all the software that you'll need for the curriculum. And we ship that out to you a few days prior to the cohort start. And we know you do this program because you want to get your foot in the door and get a job in the industry. And so career services is an important part of the program. We interweave it throughout the curriculum. The goal for us is to create a career plan that's unique to you, tailored to what your goals are and takes into account the experience you're already bringing to the table from the industries that you're coming from. And then of course, to help you with job placement after you graduate. And that is one of the things that we are really excited about here at LEARN is the level of support that students feel, not only as they go through the program, but even after they graduate. So if that's something that you say, yeah, that sounds interesting to me, I wanna learn more, um, the first step in our admissions process is to go to our site and submit an application. It takes them more than three to five minutes. Once your application is submitted, you'll be prompted to schedule an admissions interview. The goal for that interview is to learn more about you and your background, what you're looking for in a program and career. It is conducted via Zoom. 
And while it's not a job interview, it's great to approach it that way, kind of the first step you're taking in this new career that you're transitioning into. Once you're done with the application and the interview, then the next step is to complete our weekend prep course called Jumpstart. Um, a few things to note about Jumpstart, it is an opportunity for you to get some front end coding development skills under your belt. So we cover HTML, CSS, and JavaScript over that weekend. Two, it gives you a chance to meet some of your potential cohort mates and the instruction staff so that you can start building those relationships, right, and networking. And then three, if you're on the fence as to whether or not the learning environment is a good fit for you or this career path is a good fit, it gives you a chance to get in there and tangibly experience it and what the classroom will feel like so that you can make that decision. Once you've, you've done these things, then the enrollment committee will meet, review your application file and make a decision. If you are accepted into the program, um, we do send you a deposit request for $500 uh, and that your payment of that deposit will signal your seriousness in joining a cohort, which is important because we do cap our cohort sizes um, and it also gets you started with the onboarding process. And of course, if you're one of our veteran applicants, that deposit request does not apply to you because your tuition arrangement is handled directly through the VA. All right. Um, we know that when you choose to do this program, it is not just an investment of your time, but it's also an investment of your resources. And so we have a number of financing and scholarship options that are available. From the financing standpoint, there are a few ways that you can pay your tuition for the program. Um, first, you can pay lump sum in full prior to when the cohort starts. Alternatively, you can break up that payment across the four months that you're in the program. And if you're like most of our students, you definitely can finance as well. Um, if you go the financing route, there's a number of traditional financing partners that we partner with. The way that that typically works is you submit a separate application. You find out pretty quickly um, whether you're approved. And if you're approved, they cover the tuition. Um, you go through the four months in the program. You typically have a three-month grace period after which you would make small monthly payments back. Um, on the loan. And of course, if you want some more protection on the repayment side of things, we do have a deferred tuition arrangement with Stride um, that you can also consider. One of our stated goals at LEARN is to help increase diversity and access in the tech industry. And so we have a number of scholarships with that end goal in mind. Um, for our next cohort uh, called Foxtrot, we have awards ranging in amounts up to $4,000 for our Women's Coding Scholarship and our Diversity Coding Scholarship. And for those of you who are career transitioners, we do have a needs-based fresh start scholarship that allows for higher award amounts. The way that all of our scholarships work is you submit a separate application for them. Um, and once you're accepted into the cohort, you would find out how much you were awarded, all right? Learn is excited and honored to support our veteran community through the Veteran Employment Through Technology Education courses, also known as VetTech, and we are an approved VetTech provider. Um, when it comes to qualifying for the VetTech program, uh, just note that uh, some of the requirements are you can't be on active duty or you must be within 180 days of separation from active duty. Note that the VA will use your GI Bill eligibility to determine your eligibility for the VetTech program, but as it's currently enacted, your GI Bill benefit does not get paid down to support your, your vet tech program. Um, in order to qualify, you need to have just at least one unexpired day under your GI Bill entitlement. Um, once you have, and the way that you start this is you go to the VA website and you submit your application for your vet tech COE. That's going to be your first step. Um, and then once you have that COE, you can then apply for the program. Now, one of the things that we do allow is if you've already applied for the COE and you're waiting for it to come in, you can go through and start our admissions process. Just know that you won't receive a decision until we have that, that tech COE in hand. To that point, it can take up to 30 days to get that COE back from the VA. Um, and if you have any questions related to whether or not the COE you have on hand is actually the vet tech COE. Sometimes folks get confused with the GI Bill COE. You can always send that over to me. I'm happy to look at it and confirm for you. But just know that the vet tech COE will typically have an all cap vet tech um, so that you know it is that particular COE. And then all of the rest of the admissions requirements will still apply. Um, the application, the interview, attending this information session, you're here, thumbs on the back, round of applause. 
for getting that done um, and also doing Jumpstart. The one thing I'll note about Jumpstart um, for you veterans is uh, because of, and if you can go back one slide for me, um, because of the, the policy related to if you drop or terminate from the program, just know there is an 18 month waiting period before you can use your vet tech benefits again. It's why we have Jumpstart so that you can really make sure this is the right path for you before committing to the program. And the other thing to note is because our program is fully remote and online, that BAH is at the online rate, meaning it's based on the national average and not based on where you physically reside, right? Um, for our veterans, uh, the next cohort that we have funding returns in the new fiscal year 24 in October. So that hotel uh, cohort that starts on October 9th um, will be the first cohort that you would be able to uh, get accepted into. And this just goes over again, all the things you need to do as part of the admissions process. Final thing for me, if you look at our upcoming cohorts that are open for applications, it's our Foxtrot cohort starting in a few weeks here um, at the end of the month on August 28th and the hotel cohort starting um, October 9th. Uh, our admissions process is a little involved, so the sooner you get started, the better. And I'm always here as a resource in case you have any questions. I'll pass it on to Vanessa for onboarding. Hey everybody, again, I'm the operations manager. Um, let's see here. So I work with students to get them onboarded into their cohort in the months and the weeks ahead of the cohort. Uh, so here you'll see a list of things that we'll need to get done before the start of class. I won't go into detail, um, but I will note a few things. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, so be sure that the email address that you put down for your application is accessed uh, consistently. That's where we'll communicate the most with you. Um, we will over communicate with you. So if you haven't heard from us from a while, just check your spam, your junk folders, your text messages, your voicemail. Uh, we will over communicate. So once you're in the onboarding process, you should be hearing from us consistently. Um, last thing to note is that we do reserve the right to rescind uh, admission offers. Um, and that's based on um, unresponsiveness. Communication is really, really important, not just um, in the cohort when you're in the class, but also afterward. Um, so just making sure that you're communicating with us if you're not getting something or you don't um, have access to something is really, really important. Um, that's it for me. Very short, very sweet. Um, I'll pass it over to Sarah. Hey, everybody. Um, I just want to tell you about me just very quickly, um, because back in early 2018, I was exactly where you are today. I was deciding if I wanted to change careers. Uh, I come from a non-technical background, and I went to learn as a student, just kind of looking for the next thing. I wanted to find a career I could be passionate about. And I feel very lucky to have found that within um, the LEARN team. Um, I really like the LEARN community. Um, learn as a very humanist approach to education and the mission of making tech more available and inclusive was like the thing I was looking for in my life. So um, I started off you know, volunteering at Jumpstart at our entry level program and have grown with the team over the last four years. And um, I've now been able to work with over 500 students in almost 30 cohorts. All right, so I wanna talk briefly about the being in the classroom at Learn. Um, the program is 16 weeks and the first 12 weeks are in the classroom. We're live remote, so it means our classroom looks a lot like this. It's all of us together sharing this virtual space. So again, our program that we offer is Monday through Friday, nine to five in the Pacific time zone. It's full time, it's very immersive. It's a pretty intense commitment during a short period of time. We're a very collaborative and caring environment. Um, those are our values top down with the entire team at LEARN. So it is really important to us that we create a space where all of the LEARN community, the instructors, the students, the staff, um, alumni, all get to come together and move forward collectively on our own learning journey. Um, because coding is hard. It is super hard. But if I can do it, you can do it. So if you're willing to do the work, I'm willing to help you in whatever way I can. Until pretty recently, um, technology was made by and used by a really small group of people. And th that group of people was made up of largely one demographic. 
And while their contributions are super important, technology is bigger than that now. Technology is integral to the day-to-day -day function of our society. And code is in our everyday lives. It's in cars and credit cards and entertainment. It's in medical devices. And of course, all of the apps on your phone that keep you functioning and connected to the world. So if code is a necessity and not a luxury item, that means that we need a very diverse group of people creating that technology. It, the decisions that those people make that put in, that are making the technology that you use, use every day impacts you. And so it is important to us and to um, the greater tech community that we are doing our part to diversify that group of people so that we can make good technology moving forward. Okay, a quick snapshot of a quote unquote typical day in the life of a learned student. Um, so at all these times are in Pacific, um, at 8.45, we open the classroom. Uh, we encourage our students to log on, just make sure that your Zoom connection is um, good to go. You know, do a quick overview of the day. We start promptly at nine o'clock. Uh, punctuality, attendance is an incredibly important part to being successful at learn. Um, once we uh, start our day, uh, we um, typically go, uh, we start our morning with like a little bit of a, a presentation from the instructor. So the instructor shares their screen, does a lecture, talks about um, coding processes and vocabulary words and codes along with you. After that, our students are able to break out and get hands on with the code. Uh, we take um, lunch at 12 Pacific and then the afternoon is, a, is pretty much a rinse and repeat of the morning. Then we wrap up at five. Um, so on this slide is a list of requirements of the cohort. For the most part, they are super straightforward, but I just wanna talk about a couple of them here. Kind of the, a couple of the, um, or the broad takeaway from some of these requirements is that participation is required. And participation means coding with your peers. It means engaging with your instructors and your classmates. It's asking for help when you need it and taking time to help others. It means that your camera is on, that we are looking at each other's faces so that we can engage in all of the appropriate types of communication, both verbal and nonverbal, so that you're engaged, you're accountable, and that you're present in class. This is not a class you can do part-time or while your focus is divided. We're taking a huge amount of content and shrinking it down to a really short period of time. So to be successful in this space, um, you have to make some sacrifices to prioritize your learning. Uh, the other thing that Marquista noted, but I just want to revisit here, is that Learn will prov provide you with a MacBook during uh, your cohort. So you can think of it in the same way as if your work is, your job is giving you a laptop. So it is expected that you use our computer. Um, if you're not a Mac person, I'm sorry, uh, the technologies that we use in our program are, are better integrated into the Mac operating system, but I've had plenty of people who come from a very strong Windows background to be able to make the transition. So it is required that you use our MacBook. Our team goes on and sets up all the apps and technologies that we need um, in order to work in the class, and it just makes all of the processes um, of collaboration and troubleshooting quite a bit easier. Um, all right, I think that's it for me. I will pass it on to Paul. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, I'm Paul. I'm the uh, Career Readiness Facilitator. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of uh, the career services that we offer in the program. And uh, yeah, so the Career, uh, career Readiness Curriculum uh, runs parallel with the, the, the technical aspects that uh, you'll learn. So um, alongside the coding, we're going to uh, teach you the skills and the tools that you're going to need to secure the job. Um, and so this element of the program should be viewed as important as learning how to code. Being able to communicate uh, with uh, prospective employers um, is very, very important. So having these skills and tools in place before you enter the job market increases the likelihood of quickly finding work. And so, yeah, we um, give you advice on how to develop and leverage your professional network. Um, we spend an entire week away from the coding side of things, um, and we do professional development week. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more uh, about that in a moment. And then after you graduate, uh, you will be passed on to the alumni success manager who will set up meetings. It's an opportunity for you to ask advice. 
uh, and work together to improve your assets, such as uh, resumes, cover letters, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll give you some tools on how to organize your job search. Um, you'll also uh, be given continued access to the support of the greater learn community uh, that we're very, very proud of here. So in terms of what you can expect in terms of input so regarding career services, uh, we start off in week one by starting to build a network. Uh, using LinkedIn at first and then uh, getting into meetups, tech events, and uh, uh, yeah, and ways to build up that uh, that network that you're going to um, leverage after you graduate. Um, we'll also uh, introduce the uh, a very important tool, the portfolio. Uh, this is the kind of one-stop shop to um, showcase all of your uh, newly found skills, and we'll, we'll talk about how best to, to go about that and the content that should be uh, within. Uh, we'll organize an alumni panel. Um, uh, we invite graduates uh, from the program who've made a success of the program. They come in and uh, we have a little uh, discussion, a little panel, uh, talk about their experiences before, during and after learn. And it's an opportunity for you as well to ask any questions of them as well. We also organize uh, guest speakers from time to time. Uh, they talk about their expertise as well in all sorts of different fields that might not be uh, covered uh, within, the, uh, within the program. And we'll continue to do that uh, beyond even after your graduation. Um, I talked about the professional development week. So it will be uh, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, usually in week seven. And uh, this is where we identify the transferable skills from your previous uh, work experience and how you can uh, use those in the tech field. Uh, you'll develop an understanding of your unique proposition and how to communicate that as well um, in elevator pitches and in all of the assets that you'll be creating, such as resumes and cover letters um, that reflect your new technical skills. I'll also uh, introduce the uh, in interview process uh, ways to waste the technical interview, and we'll even set up some mock interviews as well during that week. Uh, there's, uh, we'll also introduce lots of uh, tools to help organize your job search, um, how to organize weekly and daily plans, online resources, and even some AI as well, and how that can help uh, make an efficient job search. There's also lots of work sessions, guest speakers, and check-in meetings as well to make sure that everything is hunky-dory. Next slide. Um, so in terms of the uh, different uh, positions that uh, learn grads um, sort of traditionally will, will go for, most of them will be kind of developer roles, these types of uh, titles here. I won't go through all of these, but uh, yeah, um, the, the developer roles are the ones that um, kind of most of our uh, graduates will kind of uh, uh, gravitate towards. But we've also had people who, with uh, design roles, uh, tech support roles and what sort of tech adjacent roles as well, if you have maybe a background in um, uh, project management and that sort of thing. So these are the types of, uh, uh, of, of titles, job titles that you can start to apply to after you've uh, graduated at LEARN. And just a couple of uh, notes about uh, uh, some of the uh, graduates that have gone through our program. Uh, again, I won't go through all of these. Uh, just wanted to highlight a couple of, uh, of our uh, former students. Um, Michael G, um, he interned um, at Cetus Media and uh, was then taken on full time um, after, after, the after the internship. Uh, he moved away, but then was brought back and became their manager of engineering and is now one of the people that helps um, with our internship program. And so uh, students, um, even in the last couple of uh, cohorts, have gone to Cetus Media uh, for their internship. Um, uh, and Kendra, uh, she uh, uh, interned at a place called Visor, who then studied really hard after the graduation to be ready for her uh, interviews. She absolutely aced it all um, and, uh, was able to secure a job at Tandem Diabetes Care. Um, she's a usability tester uh, in a field that's super, super important to her. So these are just some of the experiences that uh, and some of the successes uh, that uh, Learn Academy. I think that's me. I'll uh, pass over to Chantal. Hi, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Chantel. I'm the internship program manager here at Learn Academy. Um, I uh, work with you guys as you are taking the final steps um, at the end of the 12 weeks in the class to the four week internship that we uh, coordinate with our partners. So um, this 
four-week internship is an opportunity for our students to actually get on the job experience, um, both on internal and client-facing projects. Uh, you, we work really closely with our partners to make sure that our students get good mentorship and guidance during their internships, um, making connections with people in the industry, both at that company or introduced by people um, at that company can be a great way for you to build a network um, and help make connections to find your first role. Um, you're going to learn more than what we teach you in class. Um, our curriculum is very focused on certain things and taking that and expanding on it during your internship is something that many, many of our students do. Um, while they are uh, being hosted by our partner companies. Um, and of course, having something that is a um, something you can put on your resume as you leave the boot camp as actual work experience can be incredibly valuable to help you stand out uh, with the candidates and get you that first role. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we have worked with over 144 partners. I say over because this number needs to be updated. We've had several new partners come on in the last several months, and we're really proud of that, that we continue to grow our partnership portfolio. Um, generally speaking, about 25% uh, of our uh, students are hired by their internship programs. It varies cohort to cohort. Some have more, some have less. Um, and a good number of our students also get extensions about, at their internships, where the company offers to let them stick around for longer than the four weeks we coordinate with them. Um, below are a list of some of the languages and technologies that our students have learned and used. I was working with a student today, helping him add his internship to his resume, uh, who's been learning Swift and iOS mobile development during his internship. Um, so the variety of things that you can go and learn during internship is really vast, uh, depending on uh, where you are placed. Um, generally speaking, you will interview with the company partners that we have set up for your cohort. So I work to uh, secure our partners for individual cohorts to align with the end of their program. Uh, you'll usually interview with between three and five of those companies. Um, and after we get the feedback from all of our company partners on how those interviews went, we as a learn staff control the placements. So we look at who we should send as a group who works really well together, who can support and uh, complement each other's strengths to a company. We look at uh, how you have learned and grown through your time in class. We look at the feedback of our partners and we then um, align with them to make the matches of where you're going to end up going for your internship. Um, the final week, week 12 in class, is uh, there's time dedicated for you to start learning uh, what you need to know for internships. So if that's a new language or a new uh, program, a uh, new technology, you need to recreate some of your classroom projects in a new tech stack. Uh, you have time to do that while you are still in the classroom. While you are in internship, we don't just leave you hanging. We will meet with you twice a week for check-ins to see how things are going. Um, you, like I said, will have mentors at your internship uh, to uh, work alongside or get uh, feedback from code reviews, that sort of thing. Um, you're going to get experience in a full production code base. You getting to see how a company runs and the huge amounts of code that they use to work and operate their business is much more than what we're able to show you in class. And that's a hugely valuable thing. Uh, and you're going to be able to get feedback on your performance and your code um, to make you a more valuable candidate on the job market. These are just a couple of uh, the 100 plus companies we've worked with. Um, the uh, relationship with each of these companies is really important to us. We want to make sure that we're facilitating a really good partnership where they understand that this is a continuation of your education as a learned student uh, and are supporting you through the duration of your internship. Um, we work really hard to uh, work alongside them. I also have an open door policy, both for students and our partners throughout internship to make sure that everybody is supported in what, whatever way they need to during that time. And I will pass it off to Kumba. Thank you, Chantel. Appreciate it. Once again, my name is Kumba. I'm the alumni success manager. I work with our students um, at strategic points in during the cohort and then after they graduate. Uh, the majority of our students, 99.9%, .9%, they take this program so they can work in the industry. If that's correct for you, can you put up a thumb? You're taking this because you want to be a full stack developer, a programmer, something. Put up a thumb, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, and one of the things that we at Learn try to enforce is the fact that obviously after you go through this program, finding a job is a huge, huge thing. And that process can be very daunting. It can take a lot of support and effort and time. So one of the things we do is once you graduate and you get that certification, we're not going to be like, hey guys, congratulations, figure this out on your own. We will support you throughout that process. 
And what that looks like is extra strategic points throughout the cohort, PD week, through internship, and then after graduation, we'll consistently meet with you to help you with a couple of these things here on this list, right? Helping to build your network, your portfolio, helping prepare for interviews, making sure that your resume is where it needs to be, your cover letter, and then making sure that you have your pointed to the right direction when it comes to the job boards, right? There will be workshops that will happen to make sure that you have as much opportunities to go ahead and land your job in that industry because that's what you're dedicating four months of your life to. Um, and we take this extremely seriously, but we understand that like what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. So we try to support you throughout that process because the job search can be one of um, can be an emotional thing when you're hearing a lot of no's versus yes to the yeses. So we make sure we hold you accountable to the things that you and goals you set for yourself throughout the process until you land something. And even after you land something, you can come back to us uh, a couple years after, one year, two years, three years after, and sometimes even much longer after and say, hey, I'm I, on my second job, my third job. I would love support throughout that process. And we will continue to do that. Okay. So um, that's my role here as alumni success manager. And I'm going to pass it back to TJ for any questions that y'all may have. Awesome. Well, thank you all for hanging out with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Learn Team, for all of your information. It's really amazing to hear from all of you and I'm sure all of you got to hear a little bit about what our program is all about so before so real quick start thinking about any questions you can anything you didn't get to you can throw it in the chat we're going to open up the lines here uh you can unmute yourself in just a second uh but before we get to that just real quick uh like as you can see like our and Kuma kind of mentioned like we're here for one thing and and well a lot of things but one of the big things and what we measure our success on is helping you all make a successful career change in the tech and the support we have the process we have it runs deep it's not just this isn't just a coding boot camp it's a complete transformation for your career path and it starts from the minute you know you enter this uh this info chat to the day you go through jumpstart the weekend you go through jumpstart the day you start your first day a whole career services program, an internship built into it, and the support you need after the program. So this is this is a whole encompassing package to help you really make a successful career transition into tech. And like I said, the support runs deep and we're here to get you to do it. Um, so anybody have any questions, go ahead. You can, uh, you can raise your hand. Um, if anybody knows how to do that feature in Zoom, it's right here uh, on the emotions area somewhere wherever it is. Um, you can also just go ahead and unmute yourself. You can throw it in the chat. I know we covered a lot of information, so maybe nobody has any questions. You can also reach out to us. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, we have, we're very, very accessible, so you can always reach out to us. While you're thinking of the questions, anybody, let's just talk about next steps real quick. So like the biggest, most impactful thing, if you have not done it already, is to join Jumpstart. So Jumpstart, like uh, we mentioned a little bit of the presentation, that's our prep course. It's designed, you know, like when you're buying a car, you want to test drive the car. You want to make sure, is our program just for just built just for you? Is it right for you? Is this learning style built to optimize your career change? And Jumpstart is the best way for you to get that picture. And it's also the best way to get the foundational skills to start the program. So a lot of you new to coding, you've never coded before. That's actually what we want to hear because all of our alumni came from your same position. They've never really noted, known how to code. That's what we specialize in. So Jumpstart allows you to build that foundation, allows you to see what the program's about, allows you to get started. So we're gonna send some follow-up information. If you haven't gone through, gone through Jumpstart already, we're gonna send it, how to get signed up. Um, I see Justin's question, well, oh, we got some questions rolling in. And then if you haven't started the enrollment process, that's the next big step. So, but I'd really recommend Jumpstart. We got some questions flowing in. So I'll let uh, Chris, you got a question, please go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Uh, thanks, man. Um, so real quick, uh, I saw 25% of folks get hired on by their internship company. Is that still remote? So are those guys going straight to remote work or are they moving to whatever cities they're um, so that is getting hired out of their internships. And we require all of our internship partners to be able to facilitate remote internships for our students. It is a remote uh, program. So with the internship being an included portion of that, all of our partners understand internship must be able to be completely remote. 
That being said, if a student and a company partner are geographically in the same area um, and there is an option to go into the office, we are happy for that to be coordinated between the student and the, their, their host company, but it is not a requirement of ours, nor can we, nor do we allow our partners to require it of our students. So we don't say like, we're only going to give you interns who are in San Diego. That just doesn't work. All of our partners allow for remote internships. Okay, thank you. Of course. Yeah, and I think that brings up a great trend, Chris, is that that's a really awesome, like, through the internship program, a lot of them provide remote work. A lot of companies are switching to remote work, so that's a really good opportunity, like the post-grad side, that Paul can work with you. So if you're looking, and that's one of the things we really try and focus on, on the career services side, is like, we're here to help design what your career services goals are like if you really are looking for remote opportunities paul can help you really dial in like what opportunities what specific areas you're interested in and that's a lot of what he does during that process too um with that a follow-up i guess while we have everyone uh yeah. staff wise do you guys care if we're not in the u.s while we attend school i understand i understand like time zones would be on me we do require that you are living in the US uh, to attend the program. Just because it's with the laptop um, situation, it's it's very challenging us um, and a little bit more on the you know, more resources side to uh, account for people completely outside of the US. Um, some individuals who are in like maybe some case by case basis we take a look at. So when you're in the enrollment process, we can kind of look at it. But for the most part, we do not provide um, provide uh, uh, resources. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Lots of info. Great questions. I see we got some stuff covered about the computer. Justin, you got your question answered about the. Jumpstart are the, the other resources as far as what's good for beginners. We also send a lot of pre-work tutorials through Jumpstart. So Jumpstart's not just the first thing that we send you. We send you some more work to get uh, up uh, onboarded and ready for the curriculum so you feel nice and prepared to start ready to go. Cool. So uh, if there's nothing left and no other questions we're, like i said we're very accessible if you have anything please reach out to us i know we're talking and have been speaking with a lot of you already whether it's our upcoming cohorts whether it's the vet tech starting vet tech program rebooting in october uh just again if you uh, our vet tech individuals we're, we're our applications are open so please we've been starting the enrollment process early for anybody who's interested in that 10-9 cohort so when funding kicks in we can kind of get the classes uh situated in those spots secured so it's really important to be quick be swift and uh, we'll be providing enrollment decisions quickly. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I think we had a, somebody talk about Mary Saint, Mary Jane Blige, or I can't remember, <laughs> but just popped up on the playlist. Perfect timing. Well, thank you all. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your evening, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you all soon with the follow-up information. <laughs>